Hi, everybody. You might remember last week that Jesus had visited Zacchaeus and saw Zacchaeus up in the tree and said, come on down, I'm going to your house, and went to Zacchaeus' house, had dinner there, and then from Zacchaeus' house, Jesus headed on to Jerusalem, where he rode a donkey into Jerusalem, and people were throwing down palm branches and throwing their coats on the ground, saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means praise Jesus, and they're celebrating Jesus coming into Jerusalem to be the Savior who will save them from the Romans. We're going to pick up the story now of when Jesus is looking for a, a room to celebrate Passover with the rest of the disciples. It was party time in Jerusalem, but Jesus' disciples were sad. They had no party to go to, and their enemies were spying on them. Jesus' enemies wanted to catch him when he was alone. We will have a party, whispered Jesus to his two special friends, but it must be a secret party. Jesus told them to go into the city and look for a man with a water pot. He was Jesus' secret agent. Peter and John saw the man. They followed him and he led them through the back streets to his house. The two disciples worked hard all day to get everything ready. It was a lovely party. They had roast lamb and bread and wine. No one even had to say where are the cakes. But Jesus was sad because this was a goodbye party. He knew that one of his friends was going to give him away to his enemies. Do what you have to do, Jesus said to Judas. Quietly, Judas moved away from the table and crept out into the dark streets. Only Jesus knew that he was going straight to their enemies. Jesus told his friends that soon he would have to leave them. I'm going to die, Jesus said. Here is bread and wine. Every time you eat bread and drink wine, remember me. Remember you? What do you mean? They asked, feeling very upset. You're going to be the king of the world. But Jesus said, I have to die before I can become king of the world. After the party, they went for a walk. Outside the dark city gates, they came to the Garden of Gethsemane. Wait here while I go and pray, Jesus said. He prayed to his Father, God, for a long time. But his friends fell asleep. Suddenly, lights flashed in the garden. Judas had come with a gang of soldiers. Judas walked up to Jesus and kissed him. That's the one, the soldiers said, and they seized Jesus. It all came true, exactly as Jesus had said. He did die on the cross, just for us. But three days after Jesus was buried, wonderfully, he came alive again. So I really enjoy taking some time to go through kind of old photos of things that happened in the past. And I thought I might, you know, take just a few seconds or so to just share some of them with you here. Let's have a quick look. So the first one you can see is of my mom and dad who are holding Matthias and Matthias's cousin, 
uh, Jackson when he was a baby. And I just really like this photo because it reminds me a lot of just how my mom and dad are always very caring and kind and um, just great grandparents to to my children, Matthias and Azaria, but as well as to my niece, uh, my, well, sorry, my two nephews rather, uh, Jackson and Caden. The second photo that you see here is of my brother and sister-in-law. And uh, it's just, it's a fun photo to remember them and their, how adventurous they are. And um, they're on a major hike in this photo in Utah at the time, I believe, and uh, just enjoying the outdoors. And um, they're always good fun to be around. But the final photo is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, this is obviously Matthias and Azaria with um, Lindsay and it's uh, we were taking a walk in Loch Ney up and around Loch Ney up in Antrim and uh, just uh, this photo always reminds me of just how fun um, and how blessed I am to have um, these three in my life as my family. When Jesus went back to heaven to be with his father he left us a picture to remember him by now, it wasn't a physical picture for us to actually look at to see what he looked like when he was alive. No, it was a picture for us to remember what he did for us. And this picture we call the Last Supper. Just before Jesus was crucified on the cross for us, he gathered his disciples together, his, his closest friends together, and had a last meal with them. And he took a bit of bread and he broke the bread and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. And then he took a cup of wine and he poured it and saying, this is my blood that will be shed for you. And so we told him that and told the disciples that whenever they eat the bread and they drink the wine, or the grape juice, whichever it is, that they are to remember Jesus' sacrifice for us and that he gave up his life for us. And that's something that we still do to this day, to remember Jesus and what he did for us. So let's just take a moment and let's pray to Jesus to thank him for what he has done for us. Lord Jesus, Thank you for this reminder of what you have done for us when you died on the cross for our sins. Help us to always remember and be grateful to you. Amen.
Hi boys and girls, if you don't know me, my name's Johnny and I'm going to be teaching you today's memory verse. So today's memory verse is found in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And boys and girls, what this verse means is that um, we can put all of our trust in God and we shouldn't be listening to what other people or to even ourselves to know what to do. We should be listening to God and be doing things that please him. So to help you remember this memory verse, I'm going to be teaching you some actions. So copy after me. Trust in the Lord, and we're going to point up because that's where God is, with all your heart and lean. So I want you to go and get maybe a chair or a table or even a sofa that you could lean on and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and the reason why we do this for Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 is because this verse is found in your Bible and if you go to your Bible and you look up Proverbs and go to chapter 3 verse 5 you will find this verse. So we're going to try and say this memory verse together with our actions. So after 3. 1, 2, 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. And boys and girls today I've got a challenge for you. It's going to help you remember this memory verse but it's also going to help you do something else. The reason why Jesus tells us to learn our memory verses is so that we can actually go and tell other people about God. And it can be quite hard to go and just tell people about Jesus. So I'm going to challenge you to come up with like a creative way that you can go and tell other people these verses. So maybe you might be on a call with a friend or a family member um, and you can tell them then. Or maybe you could make a nice poster and you could put it in your window and that way anybody walking past can read it. Or maybe boys and girls, if you're going to the beach, you could write the memory verse in some pebbles and that way anybody goes to the beach anybody who goes to the beach will be able to see the memory verse. Or maybe boys and girls, you can do what I did. But I'm not going to show you what I did just yet. We're going to do this memory verse one more time and then I'll show you. So after three, one, two, three, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Boys and girls, the way that I decided um, I was going to do it was I was going to get some chalk and write it on the pavement outside my house and that way anybody who was walking past was going to be able to see it. Um, so let us know how you get it on um, and I'll be excited to see the things that you do.